if you take one thing away from this, just be confident. Hey guys, so as you can tell by my business formal attire, today we're going to be doing a video talking about getting internships and getting jobs because ever since I started the internship process three years ago, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to apply for internships, how to interview for internships, just wanting to hear my experience and get my tips on how to ace the interview. So, Today that's what we're going to do. It's going to be kind of a long video and I'm going to break it up into sections so whatever part of the process you're at you can kind of click to the time marker that's going to be listed in the description box and you can check out specifically that portion. Um, and if you're just starting and you want to see the whole thing, go for it. Otherwise, like I said, that information is going to be down below so you can watch whatever is pertinent to you right now. And so before I fully dive into this, I wanted to preface this by saying this is all just based on my personal experience. I do feel like I have a little bit of authority considering I've successfully gotten two internships and a full-time position. Um, um, I'll go a bit more into what exactly I interned in and everything throughout the video, um, but I just wanted to say, yeah, that this is based on my personal experience. It's different by industry. The best thing you can do is talk to someone that you know who's gone through it, who can give you more specific tips. Um, and along those same lines, I'm going to be kind of keeping things a little bit general and high level. If you have specific questions, I can definitely make a video um, going more in depth into each portion of the process and you're also more than welcome to reach out to me to just send me a direct message send me an email whatever you want and I'm happy to answer your questions um, specifically so the three sections of this video are going to be finding and applying for a job or internship then the first round interview and then the second round or final round interview so we'll just jump right in with finding an internship or a job I think that the best place to start if you're in school or if you are an alumni of um, a university is to go to the job posting page and just see what's available at your school in your industry and I'm sure that most universities if not all universities have this um, for us at Northwestern it's called career cat you log on you can just Go through the website, see what companies um, are interested in interviewing students from your that school. It's a great way to make connections. It's a great way to kind of get started because it gives you an automatic connection. And in the world of internships and jobs, connections genuinely mean so much more. You could send out a thousand emails and send out a thousand resumes. But if you don't know the person or have some connection to the person, there's a good chance that they'll go unnoticed and that's sad but that's just true so start somewhere where you have an automatic connection where you can reach out to someone and say I went to Northwestern like you did or I saw your posting on the Northwestern website I'm a Northwestern student things like that can really make a big difference so start there see what's available then I think the next thing to do is look at the big companies in your industries and then just go to their websites and if they're not recruiting on campus at your school drop your resume there. I went into investment banking um, for my internships. Now I'm in private equity for my full-time position. Um, but when I was looking for investment banking positions, I went and, you know, this is just something you kind of learn by Googling, by talking to friends, but what are the big companies, um, whether for investment banking that's Bulge Bracket or Boutique, um, what are the big names? And then just go to their websites and drop your resume there. Another great thing to do, and it depends on the industry, but in investment banking, you can cold email. You can go to LinkedIn and you can figure out people who went to your school or who you have some connection with um, and just send them an email. It's really easy to Google what's the email format for, for example, JP Morgan emails and it will tell you, say, I think it's like first.last at jpmorgan.com or something like that. Um, they all have a very specific format. So if it's a big company, you can do this. You can just send an email with that person, let them know what type of position that you're interested in, attach your resume and hope for the best. I've actually had a lot of success with that um, and that's something that I initially didn't know I could do. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to find internships. Of course you can just google and do like internships.com, things like that. I've never found that to be particularly successful. I think maybe a better way to go about it is do the LinkedIn job search. So if you want a whole video talking about like resume building and LinkedIn and stuff like that um, and like building your personal brand as a candidate, I can definitely do a video on that. Uh, but to touch on it for a second, before you apply to any position, you need to have a good resume and that is something that I cannot stress enough because that is all that you have speaking for you unless you know the person and even then your resume says so much about you and it's what they can use to advocate for you. So make sure that you take the time to build a strong resume. I will be honest, I am like not the most amazing resume builder. Um, I got a lot of help throughout the process, especially from Donnie. He's really great with it. So find a friend, find um, the career services at your school, to be honest. Um, I find that like friends who've been successful with their resumes and have been told that they have good resumes are an even better resource just because you can just look at their resume and use a very similar style and be really successful. Um, 
So yeah, make sure that you have a strong resume and make sure that whenever you are going and sending correspondence, um, in that first initial email you attach your resume so that they can see what your qualifications are. And if you're the type of person who doesn't have much experience or any experience, figure out things like leadership activities you can talk about on your resume. Um, find things like even a summer job that you had. Even if it doesn't, it's not pertinent to the job that you will be working in, if you can show that you have leadership skills, if you can show that you take initiative and things like that, um, that's really beneficial. So even if you don't feel like you have much to put on your resume, you need to have a resume still. Um, and then in addition to that, you sometimes will need a cover letter to apply for positions. That's a whole nother ball game that basically just tells the company why you want to work for them specifically and should kind of go a little bit more in depth on what you think your skills are. So I'm not even going to go into that in this video. You can Google it. I can do another video on it, but that's something to be aware of. Again, talk to your friends, see who's good at like resume and cover letter stuff, talk with them, have them help you. So then once you've found those positions you can apply for, you're ready to just send in your resume, cover letter if required. Um, and then, you know, in different industries, for example, journalism, I know they require you to submit writing samples. Um, for investment banking, you didn't have to do anything like that. And uh, yeah, once you've applied for the positions, and I, I do stress positions, you should be applying as many places as possible because it is really competitive. And as much as you may love a firm, it's always good to just cover your butt and apply a bunch of places so you have options and so that you don't end up in a position where you really thought you were going to get something, but you didn't end up getting it and now you're stuck. So apply to a lot of positions and then wait. And then once the waiting process is over and you get an email or a call letting you know that they want to have a first round with you, that's when the real work starts. So when you go into an interview, um, there's a lot of things you need to have prepared. And I think the two biggest things is your about me. And then secondly is knowing about the company and about the industry that the company is working in. Because I have talked to recruiters and I actually had a great call with the recruiter um, at the firm that I'm currently employed at, which is like crazy to say, um, and on our first call together, I talked about my YouTube and I she talked about how she thought it would be cool if I did a video like this, and I was telling her, yeah, I definitely have been wanting to do one, but she said that her advice to candidates is that you just have to know about the company, and it is so awkward and embarrassing when it's clear that a candidate didn't do any research and doesn't know anything about the company, and so I think that that is like that's just huge and it, it doesn't take that much effort. And really what that just starts with is Googling the company, reading about the company on their website, maybe reading about what makes the company stand out. And so when I'm preparing for an interview, I pull up a Word document and I always just paste my about me at the beginning. And then after that, I'll have the question, why this company? And so from there, I'll just look online and it's sometimes hard to figure out how they differentiate themselves and that's okay. If you can talk to someone in the company, if you know someone, if you a friend of a friend knows someone, if you can find any way to get on the phone and just hear what someone liked about the company, I think that's great because then in this section you can say, well, I talked to so-and-so on the phone and they said such and such. Um, and so I think just really talking about in that section why you're interested in that specific company as opposed to some of its other competitors is something that can really set you apart and help you get the position. And then in addition to that, I think it's also important to think about why you want to work in the industry. Um, so in investment banking, you'll oftentimes get, so why investment banking? And that's maybe a question that you don't necessarily expect to get in interviews. Um, and it's something that's really awkward, again, if you don't know, or like don't have a prepared answer for, because you don't want to be sitting there thinking like, well, why do I want to do this? Um, a lot of this you can just Google. You can find so much information on Google if you're ever wondering something about a job. Google it. Like, so many people go through these interviews, so much information is available, especially within finance. Again, I don't know so much about other, other industries, but especially in finance, you can go online, you can Google literally everything, and it'll show up, and you'll have answers. So that's great. I think that um, that's such a great resource and such an easy thing to do. You can literally sit in bed. And then also talk to your friends who are in the same industry. They are great resources, as I've been saying throughout this video. And so then the next important thing is to have kind of an elevator pitch or a little about you that you can quickly and easily say at the beginning of an interview that just kind of goes over the key points of your resume, who you are, what you're studying, what your year is, um, and just kind of lets them know a little bit about you. And then I always like to finish it with something fun about myself, um, and so then at the end I'll kind of say something like, and in my free time I enjoy making YouTube videos. And that usually ends up getting us to talk about my YouTube channel, which is something I love to do, um, and I think something that sets me apart as a candidate. And so 
finding a way to kind of working what you're passionate about um, outside of school, outside of the job, I think just kind of gives you an interesting human element and I think it's just kind of a nice touch to the end of your about me. So then when you're in the interview, a first round generally across industries is probably just going to be behavioral questions. Um, I'm not super sure for all industries, but it seems likely to me that they start off kind of easy. They just want to get to know you. They want to hear um, about your experience, so be prepared to walk them through very specifically what you've done in each position um, listed on your resume, what you like about your classes. I get asked a lot um, why I chose the school that I'm at. Um, and then you'll get like classic behavioral questions, which are things like talk about a time that you have worked as a team, or how do you deal with situations where you have to correct someone, or how do you manage multiple tasks at a time? And this is somewhat industry specific, I guess. You know, a journalism student might get very different questions than a finance student, but behaviorals are kind of a bit more cohesive um, across industries just because they're just trying to get a sense of who you are, how you work with people, how you think. Um, and I think that they're probably the easiest thing to do right. As long as you kind of just familiarize yourself with your resume and think kind of just do some like reflection about what your skills are, what your strengths are, um, and just be able to kind of talk about that. That's another one, like what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. Another one that I get a lot and always kind of threw me in the beginning was how would three friends describe you or how would three teammates describe you? I think that those, they're really looking for you to kind of be introspective, but then you also have to sum yourself up in three words, which is like kind of difficult. Um, so just kind of look online at classic behavioral questions, figure out answers to some common ones, and just kind of be prepared to think on your toes. And when you're answering these behavioral questions, I think the most important thing other than just being kind of eloquent and confident, is having a concrete example. And so whenever they ask me a behavioral, I start by saying, well, I think a good example of this is, and then talk about a time that this was relevant. So that's kind of the gist, I think, on behaviorals. Um, and I think just going through the interview process, the biggest thing above everything else is being confident. And just going in there with the idea that you're going to just ace it and you're just going to be the star candidate that you know you are and just impress the heck out of them and then just be confident and enjoy the conversation and just try to get to know the person. They're going to, you know, be trying to get to know you as well. Treat it like a conversation and I feel like a lot of times when I fit well with a company, it's just easy and the behaviorals just fly by and I kind of even enjoy them. And then at the end of each round of interviews, you'll generally be asked, do you have any questions for me, the interviewer? And that's another place where you need to kind of have done a little bit of thinking beforehand and I always have a couple quick ones that I go to. Um, I like to ask them about what they enjoy working on at that time, like what's a project that you're working on right now that you're you're interested in or, or that you can talk about. Um, I like to ask them why they chose the firm that they're working at and after working there for X number of years what they like about it. I think that those are two things that kind of turn it back on that person, they get, let you gain a lot of insight into the company. And then in addition to that, if you have any genuine questions, I like to ask generally about the training program that they offer um, for analysts because in investment banking that's really important as with private equity. So I'd ask about what type of training program they have for people who are getting started. Um, and then any questions that you have based on what they've talked about in the interview, if there's any way you can tie in kind of your knowledge about the industry and about the company in through these questions that makes it sound like you know about the company and you want to learn more. I think that that is like really, really helpful. Okay, this hair is bugging me. And then once you're off the phone, wait a little while and then send them a thank you email. I think that that does so much. They should give you their email. Um, at the end of the call, generally they'll say like, if you have any questions, you can reach out. Um, so send them an email and just say, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I really enjoyed learning about your experience in X, Y, and Z, or I really enjoyed talking about X, Y, and Z. I hope to speak again soon or something like that. That's just very short, very sweet. And I think it just leaves a really good impression that you care about this position, you care about the company, you appreciate that they took the time to talk with you. And I think it just sets a great foot forward for you to move on. Sometimes interviews will stop there, that's it. You then get a call later on about whether or not you got the position. But a lot of times, especially for our jobs that you're gonna get out of, college for full-time or for internships in industries like banking, you'll have multiple rounds. So the first round is pretty easy, more informal, and then the second round and third round um, are a little bit more difficult and they involve technical questions. So this really varies based on industry and this is where I can only speak to banking and private equity um, and honestly not even private equity because it was kind of a unique experience. Um, and I can also speak towards a consulting because that's something that through this private equity company I did some consulting type interviews. And this is where you have another step forward where you really have to do more preparation. I think the biggest takeaway from this is figure out what the industry standard is and figure out 
how you need to prepare to be successful and what to expect. So for banking, this preparation should start well in advance because the technical questions that you'll get asked are difficult and not something you will have seen coming out of college unless you went to a school that taught investment banking courses, which I didn't even know happened, but apparently there are. The way to start this is to get guides, and you can buy them. A lot of times you can find them from friends who have them, um, who can like pass them on to you, buy books, things like that, and just study. It's honestly like taking another class. You just have to read through these, start memorizing them, and then be able to come into an interview and basically have an oral exam where you just get asked questions and you have to regurgitate information. But you have to make sure that you understand that information because when they ask you about it, they may take it a step further and they may get to a point where they're really trying to see whether or not you just memorize or if you actually understand what you're talking about. So I, again, won't go into too much detail here just because for a lot of you, you're probably not going into banking, so it's not going to be helpful. But I think the biggest takeaway from this is figure out what the industry standard is and figure out how you need to prepare to be successful and what to expect. Because the worst thing is going into an interview, having no idea what to expect, and then getting completely blindsided and just bombing the interview because you didn't know what was coming, when you could have otherwise known and prepared. So figure out based on company, based on industry, um, what, what you're going to be asked when you come in and try to be as prepared as possible. And then, like I said, just go in, be confident, have a good attitude. If you don't know the answer, give it your best shots. You can be honest, you can say, I don't know. But that I don't know has to be followed by a but. And you have to say, I don't know, but this is how I would think about it. Or based on my understanding of, of this, this is what I can say about it. And just give them anything to show that you're interested. And then I think it's really important after that to ask them, so how would you go about thinking that? Or what is the right answer? And I think just doing that shows them that you want to learn, that you're not just there to regurgitate information, but that, you know, like on the job, when you make a mistake or when you don't know something, you want to learn from that. And I think that that's the best thing you can do in one of those scenarios where you end up in a position where you actually didn't know the answer. So yeah, then, like I said, just confidence going in, feeling like you can kill it. If you make a mistake, running with it. Honestly, joking around is okay. Sometimes I would get asked mental math questions in interviews. I'm not that great at mental math, I will be like the first to admit that. And so in my last um, investment banking interview, I got a mental math question and I thought about it for a second, I got the right answer, but I felt like I was kind of slow and so I was, you know, I just kind of made a joke and I was like, whoo, wow, haven't done mental math in a while. And it's funny because in investment banking, mental math is really not required. They just kind of do it to test your quantitative skills. Um, but you use Excel all day, so then me and the interviewer ended up just joking like, oh yeah, like, you know, it's really essential to the job. Um, and that was just a great way to kind of feel a little bit better about the interaction, feel a little better about myself and the answer, make the guy laugh, it was fine. Um, so just have a good attitude and go in there being the type of person who they would want to work with. Because I think at the end of the day, if they're faced with a candidate who has excellent technical skills but isn't personable and isn't someone that they would want to work with, and then they're faced with you who maybe have slightly less strong technical skills but a great personality and you seem teachable, they'll pick you because they want to be around you and because they believe that they can make you just as successful as a person who has a strong technical skills. And so I think that that is the biggest thing to remember. Just go in there and blow them away and have confidence in yourself. So I'm actually late for a meeting now, but that is kind of my overall advice, tips and tricks on applying for jobs, interviewing for jobs. Just if you take one thing away from this, do your research about the company, know how to talk about yourself, and just be confident. And I think that that is just, at the end of the day, all you really need to be successful and to find a position. And just don't give up. Just apply to as many places as you can. Take as many opportunities as you can. Try your best. And I just, I think that if you are really putting it all out there, then you're going to have a good outcome. So, like I said, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. I know that this couldn't cover nearly everything. I'm going to be doing another video where I talk more specifically about my internship experience and then how I like transitioned from internship to full-time. And I think that that is kind of an area that I feel like I haven't touched on um, in this video. So know that that's coming, but this is a very long video. But I wanted to give you as much information as I could in this time period. But like I said, I'm now three minutes late for a meeting that is ten minutes away. So I gotta go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And again, feel free to message me. Feel free to comment below. I will definitely answer your questions. I hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck. And I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye, guys.